my name is Mohamed Samad and I was diagnosed with colon cancer in May of 2021. Before that I was living a fairly healthy lifestyle but one morning in October of 2020 I woke up and I felt this sharp stabbing pain in my lower abdomen which sent me to the floor. Little did I know that that was the first signs of having bowel cancer. Weeks had passed and those pains hadn't returned but I felt bloated and, and constipated and those pains had started to come back. By the new year where the pains had occurred I felt a, a lump internally. I promised my family that I would go and see the doctor. What happened unfortunately was my father had become ill. He had contracted COVID. He was shielding because he had multiple health issues but somehow, some way he had contracted COVID. One night after having difficulties breathing he was taken into hospital and he remained on the COVID ward until unfortunately he, he passed away. Being Islamic within the the Muslim society and what the Quran dictates is that you will need to bury the body as soon as possible ideally within 24 hours but because these were such unprecedented times we we did our best but we managed to bury my father within five days. I think it's fair to say that during this time my health issues just took a back seat but it did make me very conscious of the fact that something wasn't right with me internally. I went to the GPs and I saw a doctor. She told me that it was constipation. I did undergo a physical examination whereby the doctor said they couldn't feel the lump. And I was given a prescription and although it did help with the bowel movement and, and the constipation, the, the pains and the bloatedness was just getting worse and worse. I went back to the GPs. I saw another doctor who examined me again and I was told it was IBS. So I was given more laxatives and I was asked to follow a FODMAP diet. A lot of the food groups mentioned within the FODMAP diet I had already either restricted or completely eliminated. So I decided to take the medication. I got to the point where my symptoms just get worse and worse and I went back to the doctors, I saw the same GP as I did before and I just said to them that we need to do some form of test. So I insisted that I have a blood test. The doctor was reluctant to be honest, he was confident that it was IBS but nonetheless he, he did agree to a blood test. Within two days I got a call to say that I would need to carry out another blood test because it showed inflammation. So I did another test which came up with the same results. I was told to take another blood test and also I was being asked for a stool sample. I'm quite fortunate in the sense that through work I, I get private health cover and I saw a consultant. He sat me down in the office and he looked me square in the eyes after looking through all my results and said you poor sod. He laughed and I laughed too. I wasn't entirely sure what I was laughing at, but I just felt finally someone understands what it is that I'm going through. And he explained to me the tests that had been conducted showed that there was inflammation in my body. We agreed on a colonoscopy. I was given the bowel prep on the same day, which I have to say was probably the worst of it. It was revolting. Apologies for hearing that. That's my stoma going. But nonetheless... Went for a colonoscopy. As the camera went in, I felt a bit of pressure, nothing much. I was under local anaesthetic. When it came round to the curve, that's when I started noticing that I was in a lot of pain. And the nurses tried to calm me down. All I could ask for is for the camera to be removed. The doctor decided to just put me under. And I woke up. They called in the doctor, who came in very sheepishly and said, just outright, I'm really sorry, we found a tumour, we think it's cancer. He took biopsies, my thoughts at that point were just with my mother who had just lost her husband, with my brothers and sisters who had just lost their father, my children who 
had just been introduced to this concept of death, losing their grandfather. I just fell apart. On the way home, I got I got a taxi. I didn't want to call anyone. I just wanted to be left alone with my own thoughts. By the time I got to my front door, my wife opened it and I told her I had cancer and I just fell to my knees and started sobbing insatiably. From then, decided to tell my family prior to my father's death. I'll probably say that our family was quite fragmented. We didn't really keep in touch. I guess life just gets in the way, but since Dad's death, we said we would make more of an effort and it did bring us closer together. So I do see that as a, as a, as a blessing, that how close my family and I are now than we were before. Nonetheless, got the diagnosis, the biopsies came back inconclusive, so I had to go through a CT biopsy. Came back to say I was stage 4 cancer, it was isolated within my bowel, but the problem was is that it wasn't just in my bowel, it started pushing out into the tissue beside the bowel and, and, and got attached to that tissue. So. It wasn't the case that you could just operate on me and take the tumour away. The hope was that I would go under chemotherapy to shrink the tumour and for the tumour just to come away from the surrounding tissue area and then to be operated on. I had one session of chemotherapy. Unfortunately, I started developing a fever. I got taken into hospital. And I was told at that point that it was inflammation because of the steroids. But it soon settled after a, a short course of antibiotics. I went in for my second round of chemotherapy. And after that, lo and behold, I ended up in a hospital again. This time, again, a fever. I was having struggle breathing. I was delirious and what had happened is I had contracted a staph infection so I was in hospital for for a couple of weeks no chemotherapy I'm allergic to penicillin so therefore I had to have uh, three types of antibiotics once the antibiotics just kicked in I was told that I could go home but I would have to continue uh, my treatment of IV antibiotics via the community nurses they took blood cultures to be tested to make sure that I was given the all clear. And I got a phone call from the hospital to say the blood cultures are back and unfortunately I have an infection and that I will need to make my way back into hospital. It was suggested that what had happened is the tumour had perforated and that it was bleeding toxins into my system. So they'll give me a uh, high dose of antibiotics, my inflammation will come down, but because they're unable to put a bandage on the tumour inside of me, that it just kept spewing toxins into my system. So it was decided that I would go in for surgery because at this point the tumour had grown to the size of a small watermelon. My family were told to keep by the phone because there's a strong likelihood that I would have make it. I was in surgery for several hours and I was in ICU for a number of days, if not at least a week, and touch and go because my heart rate would, would just elevate and I would need to be taken back into theatre to ensure that it, it didn't stop. Fortunately, I did get better and my strength went up, but I felt this tingling sensation in my feet. I was told it was just residual pains and symptoms. It, would normally happen for someone that's been off their feet for, for as long as I had. Unfortunately, those pains got worse and worse and I was moved to rehab. I was Queen's Hospital, the centre of neurology, and I was given all kinds of diagnosis of what it could be. The issues regarding the pains that I'm experiencing is that it's nerve damage. They believe that it was due to, whilst I was having that surgery, a nerve or a group of nerves was nicked. I'm now having to live with this nerve damage for possibly the rest of my life. My attitude in life is very unaccepting towards 
what this is, I always believe mind over matter. Doctors and nurses are surprised at the fact that I'm still willing to, to walk around as independently as possible without the need of aid, but I am unfortunately needing a walking stick around the house and when I go out I, I will be in a, a wheelchair, but I'm determined to continue the fight not only with my disability but also my cancer uh, I have a stoma now um, I'm hoping to get that reversed soon it erupts spontaneously so I apologize for any of the additional sound effects that you may have heard but here I am I'm alive uh, and I'm very very thankful for that because I well and truly I should be dead I think it's a miracle that I'm here and I'm encountering my blessings every day. I am in the first floor flat. I'm unable to do stairs, uh, privately renting. <laughs> so I don't really get to go outside unless the ambulance service take me to an appointment. Otherwise, I'm sat up here looking outside the window. I call it the Rapunzel syndrome. But um, hoping to get a council property, move into that with all the adaptations. My blog is www.coloncancerandme co.uk I talk about my journey there's opportunities there to talk about your story I haven't returned to work I, I was given a occupational health assessment and I was told that I'm not fit they don't see me coming back to work in the long term I'm not giving up on that I do want to go back to work I'm hoping that my journey will inspire others to just get up and talk about it you know I hope that there's people out there that will go through this journey without any issues i've heard people have going through chemotherapy and still being able to work and still being able to live a normal life and i was naive to, to think that i would be one of them i'm still at a stage where i'm kind of mourning um the old me trying to find a new normal so are my children uh, so is my family but i'm confident that i can get to to near to where I was before in say probably the next 12 months I know that's quite a steep target considering all that has happened to me but I really do believe that it's if you if you can visualize it you can do it and I'm confident that I can